a community for you has been a part of your daily um, life in some way with the Brito Arts Trust that you and Mahboob run. And then bringing that into a sense of how you work with community in your personal work, it's quite strong in this ongoing body of uh, work and research that you've been doing with the transgender community in Bangladesh. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how you arrived at working with them? What is it that uh, started that project for you? You know, that was a project by Brito. Um, and um, uh, it was titled as uh, um, Crosscasting. So Mabub curated that show. And he actually wanted to talk about the cross-gender cross casting. Um, and then he came up with this concept that we can take this, uh, his idea um, to any direction that we choose. Like from my childhood, I was afraid of transgenders, sorry to say, because we were kind of told that they are aliens. They're not normal. So you always have to avoid them. If you see them, you just hide yourself, run from that place. Like I always uh, did the same. And then after many years, actually, that was the first time I was sitting next to a transgender in a hotel where uh, there was... Uh, Nandita Dash. So we, some of us were invited to meet her there. So we had a nice chat and all this. And, and I just found that um, one transgender, she came a bit late. So she was sitting next to me. And then when her turn came, she started talking about herself. I looked at her and when she told her story, I could not Regist uh, myself, I, I just cried and cried, you know. Uh, she said her childhood story, how she was separated from his family, from her family, and why. So that was like the first time I heard uh, something from someone which is still existing. No, that was in my mind for a long time. Her name was Joya. So when this uh, opportunity came to work on cross-casting, both institute in Dhaka was like German Culture Center. They were working with many transgender, uh, transgenders. And we also went to see some of their theaters. Then uh, I talked, I called them. I called the program director and I said that I want to work with someone from that society, community. Then I think they, I, I was particularly uh, thinking about Joya because I didn't know any of them. So then I think Joya was out of um, the country or something. Then the program director actually connected me with Anonna. So that was the first time I talked to Anonna over the phone first. <clears throat> then she asked me, she was so humble. Uh, she is still very humble. I mean, when I uh, called her, uh, she was very excited. And I said that, can you come to my house for a cup of coffee? She said, of course, when? I said, whenever you have time. She said, I'm coming tomorrow. So I said, okay. So, Next day, she came with another transgender to my house. Then, you know, I felt like within like half an hour or something, I felt like, you know, a friend of mine is there. <laughs> How did uh, this connection with Ananya end up leading back to so many childhood memories for you? So when I first asked Anuna that I am going to do this uh, video, then I realized that she is from old Dhaka. But her home, I think, is no more over there. Um, and she lives in uh, the outskirts of Dhaka city. It's, um, it's far from Dhaka. 
they they want they um they feel like secure to live together so their community are always living like at one place and community become family to them uh their own family uh you know uh, is like a second chapter of life they are no more their close uh, family relation so in uh, i realized you know the way she was talking about her childhood what i was doing that time in my hometown in that village i was so innocent and in her interview she was talking about like how um uh, you know abusive was the uh, the uh, pujari but she also added that i enjoyed that afterwards so wh- why she was like she was experiencing all the these things when she was 8 or 9 that time i was like a innocent child protected by family and i had no idea about this world so i was always like comparing myself you know where i belong to what was my life that time so everybody was like i was everybody was like you know they loved me they adored me but she was facing trouble from her childhood no? so one day mabu ben i was i were invited to her home uh, to have food with her i was asking her if i can borrow her childhood photographs so i was sharing every single thing with her like how i am going to uh, put them together and uh, i remember that uh, uh when she left her family i left my family but but a different region she left her family because of her her, her health like you know physical condition or mental uh, condition i left my family uh because of my education higher education so i came to dhaka so i chose the photographs from that life when we both were together with the family and uh, through through ananya you've also been working with the community and, and it ended up leading to an entire exhibition of reversal reality so could you talk about what this experience has been for you and also how this relationship and association is ongoing beyond just an art project for you today um i actually made one video that time that i um, talked about that one like onunna was telling her story i could not take the story also when she was i was taking her interview in that old building um i think every 5 minutes we were hugging each other and crying <laughs> they are part of society and what we do with them actually so from that you know guilty feelings i thought about like you know hiding myself in a grave or something so the video was called as home so all her stories um were somehow you know memorizing her home her family there were two uh, kind of uh, caskets uh, uh, made out of rajus so that was the final home for everyone final destination so those two things were also there so that's how how i composed but i still have very good contact with her she has opened a, a beauty parlor with another transgender and they are running it very well so um, we talk um, sometimes over the phone uh, then she says that she wants to come to our house but she can't because she has to be there like um, whole day every day actually seven days then she doesn't have any holiday or anything so she asked us to go there and see her i think these friendships end up growing into so much more they begin with like an art project very specific yeah. but then they grow into things that art comes along the way but it becomes a yeah, yeah. Cool friendship then <laughs> yeah so i tried not to take anything from her actually hmm. 
I since I can like I can uh, replicate things, so I replicated her things, mm. and then I gave it back. At some point, I asked her that, "Onunna, don't you think that a uh, lot of people also take the opportunity to use your stories? So, if you feel like that in my process, let me know." Then she said that she calls me Appa. Huh? She is like a little bit young, younger than me. <clears throat> so she said that um, Appa. Actually, if you guys don't tell the story to others, how will people know about our problem? We are screaming. We are talking about it. We are telling the stories whenever we are getting chances. But do we really get enough chances to talk about ourselves? So, you know, in that way, uh, when she told me that thing, because I had some confusion in my mind. Uh, but while I talked to Anonna, well, she told me this thing, no? then I just felt like, okay, now I can fly. <laughs> yeah, if I can keep my respect to them, if I can uh, be careful about all these sensitive things that they don't want, they don't like, if I don't embarrass them, or if I don't... Uh, try to like use them for my own purpose only, then it's all right. Yeah. 